in studying the event that transpired during the time of God and Noah, kung inyo pang naalala, hinighlight ko ang subject ng wrath of God. There is another subject that I want to highlight to you this morning, and that is in terms of what has been known as the doctrine of God's common grace. Itong katuruan na ito ay nadaanan na natin nung pinag-aaralan natin si Adam and Eve, especially when they fell into sin. Halimbawa, kung maalala din ninyo, yung sinabi sa Genesis 3.22, then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever, therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. Tainted na po ang humanity ng kasalanan. At dito sa verse na ito, the author makes the observation that if man sin again by eating the remaining fruit from the tree of life, they would live forever. At ito is isang terrible news to consider, living forever with sin. At nakita natin, God's judgment upon Adam and Eve was also a practice of restraining them from further evil that would have a larger devastating consequence. Nakita rin natin at nabasa ng ilan sa inyo si Cain. At dito nakikita din natin yung biyaya na binibigay ng Panginoon pagamat alam natin ang ginawa ni Cain. In Genesis 4.15 and the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. So in order that others do not commit the further, of, the further sin of murder, this time, si Cain yung maging target, the Lord marked him with a sign as a warning. And brethren, this is a good example of both God's judgment and common grace. Does Cain deserve that from God? And yet God did it for him. But our interest will focus upon God's common grace after God decided to establish his covenant with Noah, meaning to say, Tapos na po yung flood. Kasi ito yung generation in which you and I belong. Binago na bago ang lahat dahil doon sa kaparusahan ginawa ng Diyos. And the new generation of people will come from Noah's family. At tuloy-tuloy po yun, wala na naging interruption, therefore it includes even the generation in which we belong. At napakalaga na unawain natin ito dahil marami pong misunderstanding pagdating po sa biyayang ito na ipinagkakaloob ng Panginoon sa lahat. At bagamat mayroong mga objections, I will not be addressing at least four objections that I know because it will take much of our time. But sa halip, eh, tignan natin kung ano ang maaring ibigay na katuruan 
sa pag-aaral ng common grace as a teaching that arose because of man's sinfulness. Remember, hindi sana kailangan yun kung ang tao ay hindi nagkasala. So tayo ay muling manalangin at tubingi ng tulong sa ating Panginoon. Muli po, aming dakilang Diyos, kami ay dumudulog sa inyo sa pag-aaral namin ng katuroang ito na nabiging bahagi ng buhay namin pagkatapos na magkasala si Adam and Eve and more especially nung time ni Noah that has become the generation in which we belong. At nawa makatulong ito, Panginoon, upang higit pang maunawaan namin ang madalas naming narinig sa bibig ng marami. God is good. And He is good to all. So bless our meditation of your word to the glory of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The first thing na gawin natin is to define this teaching. I would begin a lengthy one na natutunan namin mga, ng mga konti pa yung mga Reform Baptist, kami kasi yung mga unang estudyante dito, through Greg Nichols, which is our teacher during that time. Sabi niya, and I quote, Common grace is a creative favor and goodwill which stems from the creation blessing God spoke to Adam and Noah, which the Creator bestows on animals and man alike, and on righteous and sinner alike, in this life until death, while this fallen world remains as it pleases him, which the Lord dispenses in accord with his covenant pledges, and which God intends preceptively to promote the welfare of his creatures. And then, dinagdag niya, the focus of common grace is God's creative favor and goodwill. Grace signifies favor that is unearned and undeserved. Grace is thus the opposite of something to which one is entitled as a debt. It describes a disposition to show unearned kindness. Common does not mean ordinary or cheap. Rather, it signifies that the Creator bestows it commonly. To every living creature, He blessed through Adam and after the flood through Noah. Medyo mahaba, kasi naging mahaba din yung pag-aaral namin, isa-isahin niya yung mga sinabi niya na yun noong nag-aaral kami. A more simpler definition comes from Professor John Murray. Sabi niya, ito yung ginagamit o kinukot madalas ng mga theologian pagdating sa pag-define ng common grace. Kinukot nila si Professor John Murray because makes it madaling tandaan. Anong sabi niya? When you think of common grace, ito yung sinabi niya, every favor of whatever kind or degree, falling short of salvation, which this undeserving and sin-cursed world enjoys at the hand of God. Simpleng simple, madaling unawain. Every favor of whatever kind or degree na ipinagkakalog niya sa lahat ng tao, but it is falling short of salvation. Meaning to say, itong grace na ito will not save you. It falls short of salvation 
And yet, binibigay niya sa tinawag niyang undeserving and sin-cursed world. And God is causing them to enjoy it. There is a form in which God gives common grace for the good of man because God is basically good. Regardless whether they are cursing God or praising God. So napakahalagang pananalita. God has a kind of grace that He pours out upon mankind. Upon the righteous, upon the wicked. Meron. It is undeserved blessing that, give, that God gives to all people, both believers and unbelievers. Kaya nga, common grace. Biyayang naka, nagmumula sa Diyos, ipinagkakalob niya sa lahat. John Nichols, or Greg Nichols even mentioned about even the animals. But secondly, what are the blessings of God's common grace? What are the undeserved blessings that God gives to all people, believers man sila, o hindi? Kasi sinabi nga natin doon sa definition, Merong biyaya ang Diyos na ipinagkakalaw. Short of salvation to all people. So dapat mga nawaan natin, ano tong mga undeserved blessings na ito that God gives to all people, both believers and unbelievers. Number one, God restraining evil in sinful man. God restraining evil in sinful man. Kasi, nakita natin, bago i-destroy ng Lord ang mundo na ito, yung evil na nakita niya, to the point that God decided to destroy every creature living at that time except for Noah and his family and some animals. You remember in Genesis chapter 9. Nung time na ni Noah, doon po sa covenant, merong ibinigay ang Diyos that He believes will restrain evil in sinful man. Hindi lamang ito, kundi karagdagan ito. At sinabi na yun, Surely for your light blood, I will demand a reckoning. From the hand of every breeze, I will require it. And from the hand of man, from the hand of every man's brother, I will require the life of man. Whoever shed man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God, he made man. So bagamat ang tao no, titindi yung kanyang kasamaan, because God has decided to make this. Ito yung naging foundation, halos lahat ng society that form government. Dahil sa kasamaan ng tao, kapag ka ikaw ay pumatay ng kapwa mo tao o maging yung animal, they are also to be put to death. Whoever shed man's blood, by man, his blood shall be shed. So, kung siyempre, yung mga tao, makukontrol yung anger nila. Hindi sila basta-basta papatay ng kapwa. Because it's like killing yourself. Diba? Yung law na yun will make you as if you decided to commit a suicide. And so, in some way, Kahit na magkainitan, uminit ang ulo, mag-away-away ang mga tao, at mag-isip sila ng kasamaan, in some way, they will be restrained from doing it. Di ba sa ating panahon, minsan eh, sa galit mo, parang minsan gusto mo patayin yung kapitbahay mo. Eh. Pero hindi mo basta-basta magawa, kahit may kakayahan kang gawin ito, dahil alam mo, ikapapahamak mo yon o ng pamilya mo. 
So meron mga nilagay ang Panginoon at isa ito sa inilagay na halos lahat ng government nung nagsimula ang mundo natin na magkaroon ng maayos na mga society, mga nations, talagang kasama yan. Capital punishment has been the norm. Ito na lang yung panahon na sabi ng iba, eh, hindi na naangkop no, sa isang sibilisadong kultura yung ganito. So pinalitan nila thinking that rehabilitating them is the solution. Kaya nga halos sa maraming parte ng mundo, mga nations, wala na niyan. They have hope. No? Pero kung pag-aaralan mong mabuti yung survey nila, hardened criminals never ever really train. Bihirang-bihira na nangyayari yun. Kahit sa anumang uh, approach ng ginamit ng mga tinatawag na expert, eh, ganun pa rin. Lalo-lalo na kung sila'y nakalabas. Kaya nga, Christianity has always been very strong in their voice for capital punishment. Ang problema lang, papano kung corrupt yung bansa mo, kung corrupt yung authorities mo? Kaya nga minsan tayo mga Kristiyano nagdadalawang isip kung buboto tayo na magkaroon ng capital punishment sa ating bansa ulit. Kasi nga, with a kind of corrupt uh, court you have, with a kind of, pero paano mo masasabi talagang corrupt? So ako, I still stick the capital punishment is for the good of society and nations because as God said this is one way to restrain the evil that is in men. At dumating sa punto na yung evil expression niya he will put somebody to his grave. But secondly God restraining his wrath against sinful man. Common Christian. God restraining his wrath. Doon sa covenant, nabasa natin sa verse 11, Thus, I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. So doon, unearned natin yun. Because we are sinful men, and sinful man deserves God's punishment. The wages of sin, sabi sa New Testament, di ba, yung ating kabatayan. But God, in that covenant, and became even part of the common grace of God to all, is that He is going to restrain His wrath against sinful man. Ito yung nagbibigay liwanag din kung bakit maraming tao pwede nating sagutin pag sinasabi nilang, bakit tinahayaan ng Diyos yung mga ganitong tao na mabuhay pa? Bakit hindi na lang kunin ng Diyos ang mga tao ito? Pwede ba nating ipanalangin na itong mga kriminal na ito, itong mga masasama na ito, eh, mamatay na? Kunin na ng Diyos. Lalong-lalo na, for example, kung part tayo ng persecuted church, can we ask the Lord that the Lord will finally destroy these people persecuting us. 
Ito yung magdadalawang isip ka, lalo na sa new tip, sa bagong tipan. Isang blessing din, common grace, is na responsibility mo para ma-promote yung common grace ng Panginoon laban dun sa lumalaban sa Kanya is love your enemy. Masalimot na katuroan but it is part of that. A common grace that you and I has a responsibility to exercise and to do. So, yung common grace, meron directly sa Diyos, pero meron din dinidimand ng Diyos. Sa atin, lalong-lalo na tayong mga mananampalataya. But that is one. Mahala ka din ito dahil nisan, through the internet, eh kung ano-ano yung mga doomsday na mga messages na sinasabi mangyayari sa mundo na ito, especially now, ah, uh, may climate change. So, minsan pag nag-browse ka kung ano-ano sinasabi, minsan pati ng mga Kristiyano, almost forgetting that God promised to restrain His wrath against sinful man. Maliban, of course, kung ang ating Panginoon ay bumalik ng muli. It is only up to the earth allowed to exist, God will restrain it. Thirdly, ito yung nagbigay ng kalituhan sa maraming Kristiyano. God allowing sinful man to enjoy temporal blessing. God purposely allowing all of us sinful men or men who love him, God allowed them to enjoy temporal blessing. You remember uh, earlier, doon sa pakikipag-usap ng Diyos kay, kay Noah, anong sinabi ng Diyos? Diba? The Lord, when the Lord smelled a soothing aroma, then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. All the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. So imagine in your dosa statement na yun ng Diyos, how many blessings would you and I enjoy during times of cold and heat, winter and summer. Diba? Hindi pa ako nakakapunta sa bansa na may snow. Yung iba sa inyo nakapunta. May joy pa doon. O talagang, kasi may kilala akong pastor pag winter, time of depression niya, kaya umaalis siya doon sa bansa na may winter. Mumpunta muna siya sa iba lugar. Kasi nagkakaroon siya na winter depression. Hindi ko naiintindihan kung ano yung winter depression. Ba't ka mga magkakaroon ng depression dahil lang sa snow or malamig? Hindi ko, hindi ko na siya tinanong. No. So, but just think about that statement of God. I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Even though the imagination of man is evil from his You see? Kahit na hindi ka deserving, kahit na yung mga tao hindi deserving, I will not. And this is such a reality that it troubled many God's people. Naalala niyo pa si Asa, di ba? It, it troubled many God's people, even up to now. In Psalm 73, a song of Asaph, Truly God is good to Israel, to such as pure in heart. So walang problema si Asaph kung isipin niya yung Israel. Siguro tayo wala rin problema kung isipin natin tayo as a church. Truly, our God is good to us. Imagine mo every, after three years, no, 
of living in worshiping in heat no? and here we're worshiping in some form of coldness or of a blessing yeah. pero ano yung nagbigay ng problema sabi ni Aza but as for me my feet had almost stumbled meron siyang but sabi niya my steps had nearly slipped Why? Verse 3. For I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. The mother scripture is showing to us, God is showing to us, na itong kalooban niya has brought problems to even those who love Him and worship Him. God's common grace is such a reality that it can be troubling to some. Alala nyo si Jeremiah? In chapter 12, beginning verse 1, pahalos pa rin si mula niya. Si, si Asap sabi niya, Truly God is good to Israel, to such as pure in heart. Si Jeremiah naman, sabi niya, Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. Yet, ito si Asap, But, Ito, yet, you're righteous, Lord. When I plead with you, yet, let me talk with you about your judgment. Gusto kitang kausapin, Panginoon. Gusto kong magkaroon ng discussion with you about your judgment. Wow. Ano, tapang ano? Ano yun? Sabi niya. Why does the way of the pre-wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously. Bakit yung masasaya yung mga treacherous? At sasaya nila sa buhay. No, gusto kong pag-usapan natin ito, Lord. Gusto kong pag-usapan natin yung judgment mo na yan. Ano yung judgment ng, ng Lord? That the treacherous will be happy. That the wicked will prosper. Maring may iba sa inyo nagtatanong. Diba? Bakit ganun? Nagsisikap naman ako. Nagtatrabaho ako ng matino. Pero ba't ganito? Hirap na hirap pa rin yung family namin. Hirap na hirap ako kahit doon sa simple sabi ng Lord. Uh, don't worry about the food you're going to eat, the clothes you're going to wear, the, where you will lay your head, the place you live. And yet some Christians worry. They begin to see the unbelievers around their community, purang unlad sila ng unlad. Nahiiwan na siya. O ang tagal mo na nagtatrabaho, na-promote na lahat, pero ikaw hindi pa rin. And yet, ikaw yung pinakamasipag doon sa office, ikaw yung pinakamaagang pumasok, and everything. God knows that common grace is such a reality, made it such a reality that it can trouble. It can bring trouble to those who believe. You see, common grace is not a pretended good. Hindi lang nagpipretend ng Diyos na siya'y mabuti o mabait. It is not a pretended good that God pours out good things even to wicked people. It is a real good. God is good even to His enemies. You know that? Mahalaga na matutunan natin. Naalala nyo, si Paul, in Acts 14, yung mga tao gusto silang gawing Diyos, mag-offer ng sacrifices sa kanila, naalala nyo yung event na yun. So let me read to you. Kasi doon, Eh, may binanggit din si Paul. In Acts 14, beginning verse 11, sabi niya, Now when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices saying in the Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, intending to sacrifice with the multitude. 
But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing this thing? We also are men with the same nature as you, and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living God, who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all things that are in them, who in bygone generations allowed, listen to that, allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness in that he did good. So ano yung patutuo ng Diyos sa lahat ng nations na siya ay mabuting Diyos? Gave them rain from heaven and fruitful season. Ito yung pinakamatapang. Filling our hearts with food and gladness. Ang Diyos nagpapatotoo sa buong nation, sabi ni Pablo, papaano? Ano'y pinagpapatotoo niya? That He is a good God. That He did good. By giving us rain from heaven and fruitful season, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Kaya ngayon mga anak natin, kahit hindi kristyano, tulungan natin sila. Tinuturuan natin sila magpasalamat sa Diyos, sa mga bagay-bagay, lalong na sa mga pagkain. Diba? Tinuturuan natin sila. Eh dapat ba? Dapat! Kaya magpasalamat sa Diyos. Dahil ang Diyos ang nagbigay nito sa kanila kahit hindi sila mga kristyano, kahit hindi sila mananampalataya. It is God's common grace. God has given a witness to the nation through His nature and His goodness. And what is that? That is God's common grace. God gave good things even to lost people. Tandaan po natin yan. Mahalaga din yan para hindi tayo mainggit. Hindi tayo mag-wonder bakit ganun. Kasi, lalo na sa panahon natin ngayon, na para bang yung expression that God is good is practically for believers only. Sa mga mananang, God is good. Marami nang gagano. But they are only thinking about themselves, their church. Their, no? Is God good to all? Yeah, He is good to all. That's what the scripture said. If the scriptures did not say that, I won't say it. But it's there. Ever since. In the covenant, God even made a promise to Noah. And we are enjoying that promise. The season is there. Maring merong uh, climate change. But sa ating bansa, we have the dry season and wet season. Dalawa lang naman na season natin. Nagpapatuloy ba yun? Yes, we have a wet season. We have a dry season. In other countries, they have four seasons. Nagpapatuloy. And all this, kung anumang joy binibigay nito, kung anumang pleasure, kung anumang blessing sa mga magsasaka na nagtatanim during that time. Di ba? Kaya nga paulit-ulit ang scripture. God allows the rain not only to fall upon the field of the righteous, but also to the unrighteous. Because our God is good. He's not only good to Israel, He's not only good to the church. He is good to all. But thirdly, there is a danger of common grace. May danger po ang common grace. Kaya mahalaga na unawain ito. Ano po yung danger? Man's presumption on good things. Narinig nyo ba madalas sa mga ibang mga unbelievers when they talk about God, the good Lord has always 
uh, taking care of me, my family, my job, and everything else. And because parang everything is going well with them, ang iniisip nila, God loves them. They have a good relationship with God. That God has been blessing them. Tama, in a sense, God in His common grace is blessing them. But misunderstanding the good things in life would lead to your final destruction. At doon natin gustong tulungan yung ibang tao. Dahil sa pananaw ng marami, God has always taken care lahat ng temporal needs nila in this present age. They see it as an evidence of God's favor upon them. So pag nag-share ka ng gospel, they won't try to listen and they would say, hindi, alam ko na yan. Marami akong experience actually sa buhay. Uh, nagkaroon na ako ng mga death experience and nakita ko talaga, naranasan ko talaga yung biyaya ng Lord sa buhay ko. No? Yung blessing ng Lord. Or how nagpray ako minsan, sabi ko, Lord, i-bless, bliness talaga ako ng Lord. Look at my business. Look at my ano. Uh, yung iba, di ba, pagka January, dami sa TV, ni-interview, bakit nagtataka yung marami, bakit dagsaan yung mga devotees sa sa Kiapo. Diba? Marami nagpapatotoo. Alam mo, bakit ka ba nandito? At tanongin nila Noli de Castro, no? Kasi devotee rin siya eh. Di magtatanong siya doon. Eh kasi po, alam nyo ba, nung bata pa ako, hiniling ko na yung nanay ko, yung tatay ko may sakit yun ito. Talagang sinagot ng Diyos. So they're talking about temporal needs and because when they uttered prayer or when they ask God or never ask God and yet God has done something on them with reference to temporal needs, that kind of experience made them assume, presume, that God is with them. That they have a good relationship with God. So they are taking these good things from the hands of God in this present age and counting them as evidences of God's favor upon their life. So what happened? Diba? They are misunderstanding the good thing that comes from the hand of God. On the other side naman, may mga believers, simply because God is withholding You see? What they thought to be the good things of life that they deserve, they began to doubt whether God really loves them or really cares for them. So, balikta, kabilaan. Yung isa, kiniklaim niya. Dahil ang daming good things na dumating sa buhay niya, na bless yung family niya, yung mga anak niya. Yun yung danger. And I brought this up to you because in Psalm David, in Psalm 17, David makes mention of this that has troubled many. Pero siya hindi siya troubled. Kasi, naunawaan ni David yung common grace. At sana po, makita natin. Oo, yun, pasalamat tayo, pero may danger yan. Iba, binanggit ko sa inyo yung danger sa unbelievers. Kaya maraming nagpupuri sa Diyos. Pero they are all based on temporal things. Meron naman yung mga Kristiyano na di-depress, na nag-doubt, nag-struggle. Pero yung struggles nila based then on temporal things. With God gives to all. Pero sa, sa, sa piling naman ng ibang Christian, that God seems to withhold from Him. And why is God doing this? Hindi lang yung why is God doing this to the believe, to the unbeliever but why is God doing this to me who believes in him and who depends on him and on his promises you see the danger that lurks depende pa paano ka mag-isip and I believe
Psalm 17 is a great help. Because here David mentions of something in connection with this. And David is not troubled because he understands the common grace of God. He sees it as what it is. Basahin po natin. Doon lamang tayo sa verses 13 to 15. Sabi niya sa verses 13 to 15. Arise, O Lord. Confront him. Cast him down. Deliver my life from the wicked with your sword. With your hand from men, O Lord. From men of the world. Tapos pakinggan niyo yung description niya. Who are these men of the world? From the men of the world who have their portion in this life. And whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure. They are satisfied with children. And leave the rest of their possession for their babes. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. And these good things, pagka hindi tayo nagkaroon ng perception like David, these good things, many men are turning into their own damnation. Diba? Bira mo, dahil lang sa good things na ito, iniisip mo, okay kayo ng Diyos. Hindi mo kayo okay. Common grace does not offer salvation. It can lead to you coming to Christ for salvation, but the good that God gives is only for this age, for the now, at wala nang iba. At nakita ni David yun, siya, nahirapan siya, nag-struggle siya, itong mga tao na ito gusto siyang patayin, gusto siyang i-harm, sa kanyang buhay, and so nakita natin na he is praying that the Lord would, would recognize his need to be rescued. Kailangan mo akong i-rescue, Panginoon. He calls on God to confront yung pursuer niya and subdue them. But in doing that, he described that the people in this world are people whose portion belongs to this life. This is where they have their good things. This is where they will receive it to the fullest extent. Wala nang iba. Naintindihan nyo. Sinasabi ng Diyos, tinuturo at naintindihan ni David. Yung common good ng Diyos sa lahat, even the wicked, God would allow. Sabi niya nga dito eh, look at the wicked. Diba? The men of the world have their portion in this life. The portion that God is giving to the wicked is only in this life. And, and David said, it is God who gives it to them. God allows them to have it. Ano yun? Whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure. Diba? Kahit anong gusto nilang kainin. Eh, ako pa, minsan-minsan, nasasabit sa kakain ka na yung bayad, 3,000. Hmm? Ang sarap, kumain. Hindi ko na naintindihan yung ano lasa nila pag naisip ko yung presyo. Pero yung iba, di ba magkano? Oh. Kaya ako, pag naaya, na, na, naaya, gabihin man. Minsan lang sa buhay, enjoy ko yan. Di ba? And God allows. Yan gali to enjoy it. Some of us, once in a while, as Christians, to enjoy it. Their belly filled with your treasure, your hidden treasure. They are satisfied what? With children. Hindi lang sila may asawa, binibigyan sila ng lulod ng anak. And then, hindi lang yun. And they leave the rest of their positions for their pain. Meron pa silang ipapamana. Sarap, ano? Sana ganyan ang magulang ko. Baka may iba sa inyo mayaman, gusto nyo akong iampon. Hindi pa pulit. 
Gawin mo, wala ka pagman. <laughs> oh, parang ganun. Isa, sana all. Di ba yung mga narinig kong ganun? Sana all ganun. Pero sinasabi ng Lord, all na ganun. Di ba? So sabi ni David, ang tanging inihilang ko lang sa iyo, Lord. Di ko naman sinasabing totally righteous ako. But these people who are enjoying their life, pinahirapan nila ako ng ano. Pwede ba, Lord? Awatin mo lang sila. You see? Ano lang hiling niya, oh. Simple, simple. Do not allow them to overcome me. Hindi niya iniling natanggalin ng Lord yung enjoyment ano, sa mga bagay-bagay. Dahil naunawaan ni David, that is their portion in this life. Without Christ, that is the best good that God gives to the ungodly. As a testimony to them that God is good. And one day that goodness of God will be the one that will condemn them and dumb them to hell. Yes, I have been good to you. But what did you do? When I sent my son, the Lord Jesus Christ, what did you do to him? You insulted him? You deny him? You have nothing to do with him? You do not want to listen to him? You do not want to follow him? You see, they were interested with the goods of God, but they were not interested with God as all. And God is saying that's the best good in this life. Very, very short. But after that, for eternity, you will fall under the wrath of God without Christ. Kaya po mga kapatid, hindi tayo dapat mainggit sa kanila. Sa halip, maawa tayo. Kawawa naman sila. Diba? Mabuti rin naman ang Diyos sa atin eh. Oh, nakakain din naman yung natin yung pagkain, albang pagkain, kahit anong malong pagkain eh. Manok, baboy pa rin, baka. Eh lahat naman yan, nakakain natin eh. O kayo, hindi pa ba kayo nakakain ng baka? Nakakain na, baboy. O, oh, isda. O, oh, kahit anong yaman o, no? kahit sampung libo yung plate na yun, nakakain na rin naman ako ng hipon, ng crab. Maaaring yung crab nila, ganyang kalalaki, mahahaba yung ano, No? O yung hipon nila, hindi mo malaman kung hipon pa o hindi. Pag kinahin ko yung patay ako, eh, may allergy ako sa hipon. Sa hila, enjoy na enjoy. Pero nakakain na kayo, di ba? That is good. So, we have enjoyed what we have been eating, kahit na ganun lang yan. Pero ang isang maging manatiling joyful kayo, ano mang kinakain nyo, ano mang damit meron kayo. Di ba? Is that, God has given you much. And God is reserving it for you to totally enjoy it for eternity. Eh bakit hindi, hindi niya nalang bigay ngayon? Kasi you are having a remaining sin. Pag ibigay niya ngayon yan, hindi ka pa ayos na ayos. Anong gagawin mo sa good things ng Diyos? Eh maraming ng kristyano yung good things ng Diyos eh. Di ba sabi nila, yung mga estudyante, No? Maghahanap ng trabaho pag pepre and magsaserve talaga sa Lord. No? Lord, bigyan mo ako ng trabaho and I will serve you. And... Eh, ano yung tatrabaho na? Oh, kinikwestiyon na yung titan. Nasa ba iba ba yung titan? Kasi siyempre, 100,000 yung sweldo niya. Mag-tight siya, 10,000. No? Eh, 10,000 sweldo na yun ng ibang taga-kabitay niyo eh. Sa factory eh. Eh, hirap magbigay. Eh. Kaya maganda maliit lang sweldo mo kasi madali magbigay. Eh, kasi bariya lang eh. So, eh, kung 200 ka every month, 20,000. So, ayang din nyo. Marami mababa, mabibili sila sa akin, 20. Nakakala nyo. Oh, nangatawa kayo. But the richer you are, the more difficult it is to give. You see? Pero sabi ng Lord, di ako doon nag-aalala eh. Nag-aalala ako. Sabi ng Lord, ito, nala, ito lang yung portion nila. And yet, ang iniisip nila, dahil ang yaman nila, hindi sila nagkakasakit, yung mga anak nila nakagraduate ng Lasal, Ateneo, UP. No? 
may mga doctorate, very successful mga anak, ang babae. You know? Talagang blinis ako ng Lord. Pero wala siyang relasyon kay Jesus. He has no ongoing relationship with God. Anong ibig ko sabihin? Yan lang tanong ko sa inyo. Di ba? Is Jesus Christ the reference of your life every day? If you are trying to live your life without any reference to God, you're not, you're not at all a Christian. Yun lang kakaibahan ng tunay na Kristiyano. Ang tunay na Kristiyano, he lives his life with reference to God and his will daily. Hindi lang tuwing linggo o tuwing libre ka. Eh pagka kanyan yung Kristiyanismo mo, malabong Kristiyano yan, Kristiyanismo yan, hindi yan nasa Bible. Hindi mo yan makikita sa Bible. Kaya nga, anong tinuturo nito sa atin? Hindi tayo mainggit dyan. Dapat nga i-correct natin yung mga tao na nagkakaroon ng ganoong pananaw. That simply because God has been giving them and showering them ng temporal need. Wala naman ako masama na gawa. Binibless naman din ako ng Lord. Yung negosyo, maliit lang yung negosyo ko. Binibless ng Lord. Binimit niya lahat ng needs ko. Kala nila, they're okay with God. That's the greatest danger. And you and I, one of our tasks in evangelism is to bring the truth that they be set free from thinking that God, hindi mo naman sasabihin hindi galing sa Diyos yan. Huwag mo sasabihin galing sa Diablo yan. Ang sabi ng Bible, galing yun sa Diyos as a common grace. And He allows these people to enjoy it but short of salvation. You know, is it shame? Now you come to him. No, not. Wag mong kaya niya ibang evangelism ang iba sabi. Ang mahalaga yung felt needs nila. Alamin mo yung felt needs nila. And through that felt needs. No? How do you feel today? No? You know, God is able to. What? May common grief. Na Panginoon sa kanya. We, we, we come to him whether he feels it or not. He agrees or not. The real need. Ano yung real need niya? Hindi yung mga temporal needs. Pero ang anan niya eh. Ito yung real need mo, kapatid. Huwag mong isipin na having all these, these temporal uh, goods na binigay sa'yo ng Diyos. Talagang bigay yan sa'yo ng Diyos. At ibig sabihin, you're right with Him. What is your relationship with Jesus Christ? So, ano sa tangin mo siya? You want to agree with Him saying na eh, bakit ako binibless ng Lord kung hindi, hindi, hindi siya pabor sa akin? You see, anong blessing yung sinasabi niya? Common grace. But common grace will not lead to the salvation of anyone apart from believing in Christ Jesus our Lord. So in closing, how does understanding common grace should affect our life? Number one, being recipient of common grace, remember that, yung sinabi ko na, does not save anyone from God's wrath. Yan dapat maging malinaw kayo. Di ba? In Philippians 3.18, sabi ni Pablo, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. So lilinawin mo, maaaring na-enjoy mo yung good, But they are walking. Maybe said, God is really good. Look at the, no, the way God has blessed me, my family, my children. I can go to the grave content because that's secure ko na yung buhay ng mga anak ko. Hanggang apo ko secured na yung buhay nila. Well, may mga ganyan magsalita. What security have you given to them? Temporal things doesn't save anyone from the anger and the wrath of God. Kaya nga, for Paul, he was weeping because they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, to set their mind on what? Earthly thing. Dapat kahapagan natin yun. Maging malinaw tayo sa kanila. I-address natin yun. What is 
the message being communicated by the goodness of God to a world that ignores him, to a world that curses sometimes God, di ba? Yung curse and dami. So, anong sinesend ng message ng goodness of God? Isa lang, di ba? The time of your repentance. You remember in in Romans chapter 2, sabi ni Paul, Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge, or in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. So, but we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? You won't. Or do you despise the riches of His goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? It should. The goodness of God should lead a person. Imagine, how can you ever say God is good? How can you praise Him, God is good, and yet not commit your whole being to His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ? Nakukuha niyo? Di ba? Puri ka lang puri. God is good to me. God is, has been good to my family. God has provided. And when God gives to you His Son as part of that good, which in fact is the greatest good, you ignore it. You despise it. And you say, I don't need your son. I already have all this good with me. And thank you for that. Do you think that is acceptable to God? No? No? What a great sin it is for you not to count him worthy of your whole life. Ikaw na mismo, lumalabas sa bibig mo, God is good. He has been very good to me. Yung iba nga sinasabi ba, although I don't deserve it, talagang biyaya. And yet, they won't count Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, worthy of their whole life. Yung, hindi siya worthy ng aking pag-ibig, hindi siya fully worthy ng aking worship, ng aking pananampalataya. Diba? Diba? Yung binasa natin in, in heaven, they're, they're shouting, they are declaring, Worthy are you, the Lamb who was slain. And yet, for many of these people, Christ is not worthy of their love. Christ is not worthy of their full commitment. They want only the good things of this life. And that is their heritage. No more, no less. God will never give you more than that if you reject His Son. Yes, God will not withhold from you enjoyment of the things of this world, even amassing wealth from this world. But if you reject His Son, in eternity you will be experiencing the wrath of God without an end at all. That's why Paul says, in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, what are you doing? You are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So imagine, no? Ikaw mismo sinasabi mo, God has been blessing you this. That is true. It is God who has blessed you. And yet, you have rejected His Son. What are you doing? Paul says, sa hardness ang heart mo, in penitent heart mo, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. But secondly, brethren, understanding the common grace of God should lead you to be ever more thankful that God has been doing this to our children, to our uh, family, even though they are not Christian, 
You and I should be thankful for your friends when they are promoted. Pag inaaya ako ng mga kaibigan ko, so joy, sama ka sa amin. Bakit? Na-promote ako eh. Gusto ko mag-celebrate. I could celebrate with them. Why not? It's, it's the goodness of God to allow my friend to enjoy life. Hindi naman nandito ang Diyos para pairap. Yun nga yung testimony niya eh. He is without any witness. Meron siyang witness. Ano yun? Yung goodness niya. Meron ka. Oh, pero, anong ginawa mo? Saan mo ginamit? And marami, Kristiyano, pag binigay mo na ngayon lahat, it might be to their destruction. Diba? Oh. Ngayon, naka, nung wala kang TV, talagang kung magbasa ka, yung time mo, talagang ano, you know, babasa ka ng libro. Wala kang TV. Wala kang cellphone. Eh, may internet na. Oh, kinabuti po mo yun. How good God is. You thank God. Lord, I have a TV. 55 inches. Wow. Kailan kaya ako makakaroon nun? Kaya ko, Lord, wag na. Baka maubos na oras ko dyan sa TV na yun. Ganda nun, 55. Ito, 50 lang. Ang liit pa tingnan. 50 nga ba ito? <laughs> oh, you see, tayo mag-isip, mga kapatid. E, are, what are you doing with the common grace of God? He gives to the righteous, He gives to the unrighteous. I close with this. Always be thankful because it might destroy you if you are not very particular how you use it. It can lead to your own destruction. Diba? The computers can help you in many of your job, but it can also be a source of many evil coming in. Exposing yourself. Sang katerbang evil. Pornography, crime, and everything else. So remember that. Sabi nga ng Panginoon, sabi rin ni Paul, di ba? For since the creation of the world, this invisible attitude are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and God, so that they are without excuse. Because, although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful. God can send you to hell for not being thankful for the good things that God in common grace poured upon you. Pero tayo mga Kristiyano, you know, God has poured upon you much compared to other Christians. Be wise in how you handle the good things. Because the good things of this life is the interest of Satan because it is through the good things of this life that Satan victoriously deceived even Christians. See? The good things in this life is the favorite of Satan in using it to deceive even Christians. That's why Christians who have much good things na destroy yung kanilang soul sa maraming antas. Suriin nyo, mga kapatid, yung buhay nyo. Suriin nyo yung good things. If it has been used properly, it should lead you, first of all, to be very thankful. And when one is thankful, ano yung nakikita sa kanya? Di ba? ina-appreciate niya yung binigay ng Lord. Hindi niya ginagawang basura. Hindi binigay sa yung basurahan yan. Huwag mong gawing basurahan. Nakukuha niyo? May purpose ang Lord sa pagbibigay niya sa atin. Paano mo siya gagawin? Ha? Sa akin, ano? basura lang ito. Diba? May nagre-regalo sa atin. Ito na naman mga nagre-regalo. Masabi lang nagre-regalo sa akin. Ako? Di ba? Nung panahon ko, pag kinasal ka, saan katermang tasa, baso, pinchin, pinggan? 
Wala namang ulam. Ano yung kinukinigyan ko siya? Sa kagandang, wala namang ako makain. Oh, natatawa tayo. But God is not. God is good. When He gives it, it is for your good. Even to the unbeliever, it is for your good. It is for you to enjoy. Alinaw-linaw, binasa ko sa inyo. But it can be a source of destruction. It can be in the hands of Satan, a way of deceiving God's people. And I pray that you will look to Christ because it is Christ who will lead you to understand how you are to use it. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the one teaching us and showing to us how to deny ourselves and follow Him. You see? What does it mean to deny yourself when God pours you so much common grace, so much of this world's good? Try to, under- try to answer that. God has been as poor to you compared to others, many of the temporal good. And yet here is your Lord and Master teaching you, guiding you, always reminding you to deny yourself because if not, you cannot follow me. You want to follow Christ? You have to deny yourself. But what does it mean when God pours me so much of the temporal goods of this world? What does it mean? How should I follow Christ in that way? May God richly bless each one of you, my brothers and sisters. And for you who remain uncommitted to Christ, that is one thing God cannot understand. You say that God has blessed you. That is true. You say that God has met all your needs. That is true. But the question is, why is it that God has testified to you about His goodness and yet you remain uncommitted to the best good that He gives to you? His own Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. If God is good, why are you uncommitted to His Son? Will God harm you in giving you His Son? Do you think? Answer that for yourself. Because God's intention is to lead you to repentance. All is very clear. And And may God lead you to come to the Father and ask for for, for His forgiveness and embrace His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The best good that God offers to you while you are in this world. Because when you die, that offer is no longer there. Only the wrath of God. Marami pong salamat muli, Panginoon. Sa inyong mga salita at nawa, Panginoon, gamitin mo ito sa bawat isang naririto. Kausapin po ninyo sila at hikayatin po ninyo sila. Lalong-lalo na yung mga nagsasabi na you have been good to them. Nasa kanilang experience, there is indeed much expression of your goodness sa buhay nila. And help us, Lord, help them, Lord, to realize what are they doing with the greatest good that you're offering to them. May they receive this good no other than your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And for us who believe, Father, Help us not to envy those who are having the goods of this world. For we know, Lord, that unless they are without Christ, that kind of gain in this world, even if it comes to you, will still lead them to destruction. And may we be instrument of your saving grace be able to communicate to them the true good that will bring them to life everlasting. For this we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.